the X-Wing is ready for some space blasting action in today's game, Gravitar, for your Atari 2600. And according to the box art here, it looks like the Epcot Center has gone mad, is trying to take over the universe and getting some fuel at the same time. Cool, let's go ahead and take Gravitar, pop into my Atari 7800 Pro system, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game and get some fuel. Gravatar was published by Atari and carries a copyright year of 1983. It is based on the 1982 Atari Vector arcade game. It was first released exclusively for sale to the Atari Club members in a silver box with some unsold copies making their way to store shelves later on. In the late 80s, it was re-released in the red box. Gravatar on the 2600 was programmed by Dan Hitchens, who also programmed the great 2600 version of Berserk, which I reviewed in episode 154. According to the manual, Gravatar is our enemy, and there's even an exclamation point to let us know how bad Gravatar is. He uses gravity as a weapon and has taken over four galaxies, with each galaxy containing three solar systems, and in each solar system he has installed a powerful reactor creating a killer sun that destroys all life on the surrounding planets, and placed automated bunkers on each planet. Now it appears Gravatar is planning to attack our galaxy next, but the leadership believes that if we break his hold on the four galaxies, he won't attack. Wait, wait a minute, uh, we're going to attack automated bunkers on now barren planets? Uh, leaders, I, I have this crazy idea, why don't we just attack Gravatar himself rather than his guns on floating rocks? I mean, it's, it's just a thought. Gravatar is an arcade action game that mixes elements of asteroids and lunar lander together. It is a single player game and has five game variations. In all but the fifth variation, gravity will affect your ship throughout the game. Variation 1 is actually the most difficult and starts you out with 6 lives. Variation 2 gives you 15 lives. Variation 3 gives you 6 lives again, but enemy bunkers and saucers won't fire at you. Variation 4 gives you a whopping 100 lives. Variation 5 gives you 25 lives, but there is no gravity to fight as I mentioned before. During the game you use left and right to rotate your ship, up to activate your thrust and down to activate your tractor beam to pick up square fuel depots, and also activate your shields that can protect you from enemy fire but not from crashing. Pressing the fire button fires your missiles. You start the game with 10,000 fuel units. You can pick up extra fuel by using your tractor beam on the blue square fuel depots found on planets and sometimes left behind by bunkers you defeat. When you get below 2,000 units, you will hear a warning sound. If you run out of fuel, your game ends, even if you have extra lives in reserve. You start the game in the first solar system. In each solar system, you will see different planets, an alien reactor base, a circle that represents your entry point, and the killer sun, which will cost you a life if you crash into it. Occasionally, the alien reactor base will send out an enemy saucer that will try to destroy you. If you get too close to it, the screen will zoom in for a duel just between the two of you. There are two ways to complete the solar system and move on to the next. The first way is to go to all the planets and destroy all the bunkers at each planet. Once you enter a planet, you are not allowed to leave until you destroy the bunkers, even if you lose a life. And there might be times when you wish you could leave the planet and come back later. On these planets, you'll sometimes encounter alien spaceships called rammers that will try to destroy you as well. The second way to clear a solar system is to fly into the alien reactor base, navigating your way to the center, shoot the reactor in the middle, and then escape before the timer runs down, which starts at 60 seconds for the first solar system and decreases with each consecutive solar system until the sixth solar system, where you only have 25 seconds to complete it. Once you clear the solar system, you're automatically transported to the next. When you clear three solar systems, you go to an all-new galaxy with three more. The first galaxy has normal gravity and visible landscapes. The second galaxy has reverse gravity and visible landscapes. The third galaxy has normal gravity but invisible landscapes. And the fourth galaxy has reverse gravity and invisible landscapes. Scoring wise, according to the manual, you get 100 points for destroying a saucer or rammer, 250 points for destroying a bunker, and gain 5,000 fuel units when you pick up a fuel depot. You earn an extra life at every 10,000 points, and when you enter a new solar system, you get 7,000 extra fuel units and two bonus ships, along with 4,000 extra points and a partridge in a pear tree. The score resets at 999,999 ,999 points. 
Graphically speaking, you and the enemies are pretty basic looking, but the solar system map is nice and I like the variety of planet setups. The sounds in the game were also well done. And naturally, this is a family friendly game that most likely would get an E for everyone rating if released today. However, due to the difficulty, it may not be suitable for younger gamers. At the time I researched on eBay, including shipping, for the red box and label versions, loose copies were going for $5 to $9 and new copies were going for $11 to $15. For the much rarer silver box and label version, one complete copy sold for $188, one new copy sold for $469, and an another new copy sold for $586. So what did I think of Gravatar? Do you know why this game has a variation where you get 100 lives? Because this game is insanely difficult, with the gravity constantly pulling against you, whether it be the sun in the solar system or the gravity of the planets, and there is rarely time to breathe. And often, some of the spaces you have to navigate are so narrow that only absolute perfection will work. As a matter of fact, I found myself so frustrated with this game, I was tempted to name the action of throwing a controller against the wall in frustration a Gravatar, and that's without ever coming close to the levels where the terrain is actually invisible. I have no idea how anyone could get through those. I was just about ready to totally give up on this game when something happened. I decided I wanted to go through the alien reactor base at least once, and let me tell you that is no easy task, even without using the gravity. I tried several, several times, coming close but never being successful until after a couple days of practicing, I finally accomplished it. And when I did, I went back to playing the game with no gravity and I found that I started to actually enjoy it. It's still one of the hardest games on the system whether you play with or without gravity but it's also very well made for what it is and it's very satisfying when you actually get somewhere in the game. Not that I got that far. It's very tough and I'm not likely to go back to it all the time but it is a game I could see myself playing again which is something at first I didn't think was possible. So where am I going to rank Gravatar? At first due to the difficulty I was going to rank it pretty low, but after giving it some time and learning to enjoy the game, it's going to end up in the top 30. I do like Kung Fu Master more at 26, but I will put it over the well-made Stargate at 27. So out of the 129 games I've now ranked on the 2600, Gravatar is being pulled into the 27 position. Gravatar is one of the hardest games out there, but it can be enjoyable if you give it enough time and practice. So what do you think of the game? Whether you agree or disagree with me, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also, feel free to click the like and subscribe buttons and to follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. And I'm a member of the Retro Junkies Network. At this time, I'd like to thank Michael M. for supporting the show at patreon.com slash nosweargamer. Thank you, Michael. And thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the No Swear Gamer. Take care and try not to gravitar your controller when you get frustrated playing a game.